Well, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. I want to appreciate your time coming out at 6 o'clock on a Wednesday evening. And so I think you deserve, since you're all here on time, we deserve to get started on time. So why don't we do that? We've got a few people, it looks like, coming in. And there may be a few chairs coming in. There's a few empty seats. There's three up here, for instance, four up here. So if anybody, another one here, well, there's a purse there. That's full. That's a purse. And we got two or three in here. So if anybody needs a seat. Um, first off, welcome. I'm Bill Mosier, and I run the Tram Crow office here in uh, Colorado. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, in terms of what our background is and why we're here and what we're interested in. But just to give you a little bit of perspective of what we're going to do tonight, uh, we have just been selected uh, recently by uh, the city of Arvada, the Arvada Urban Renewal Authority, and RTD uh, to be the developer, master developer for the nine acre site on Wadsworth, between uh, Vance and Wadsworth, that is currently the RTD park and ride. Um, so uh, I'm going to actually have those folks give a little explanation of what their process was to get us here. Then what I'm going to do is um, present to you uh, in a very conceptual way the two options that we submitted for the development of this, uh, and then talk a little bit about our next steps going forward. Um, there's a good news, bad news thing here, and hopefully it's both good news. The good news is we're coming to you pretty early, and we're coming to you pretty early for a reason, and that's to get some feedback from you as we start our planning process and our zoning process, which we'll, we'll be working with you as the community on. And, uh, and that's good, right? That's good. That's good. Um, and uh, it will be through the full zoning process, so you all will have multiple chances to uh, chat with me about this. But one of the things that I want to do today is introduce you to, to us, to our thinking about it, uh, be happy to take questions, and then at the end I'll be giving you the steps going forward. And primarily the steps going forward are to talk about this project in two ways. One is the transit elements that tie into the new gold line, uh, which we made a proposal on how those should be organized on the site. And then secondly, uh, the process moving forward for how the private development on the current park and ride site will move forth and what we're thinking about in that arena. Uh, but we have just gotten started. So what I'm going to show you is very conceptual, our preliminary thinking, uh, and we're, we're interested in feedback. We've got a lot of thinking that we have to do ourselves with our uh, team. Uh, and I'll explain who that is um, once we get started. Uh, but I hope you leave here with an understanding of who's doing this, what kind of plans and what kind of direction they're thinking of, uh, what the steps are going forward, and what the opportunity is for the community to participate in that discussion. So fair enough. Um, what I'm going to do is try to go through most of this fairly quickly so that we can get through uh, in less than an hour so that people who want to leave and find either that they're interested, satisfied, or whatever can go on about their business. But we'll stay and get comments and discussion, and, and I welcome that because you all know this community. And I think you'll get some sense that part of our goal here is to end up with an authentic Arvada place that really supports Old Town. And the way to do that is really to hear from you all and understand what that means. Um, so I think the first step that we were looking at uh, that would be helpful, I am Mike. I guess the city of Arvada is taping this. So people in the back, I'll occasionally go like this because I can't see you. So if, if I don't call on you, just yell at me. Um, and I guess this goes on the website, Wendy? It does, yes. Some website, so if you want your friends to fall asleep early, yeah. you, can, uh, you can pull this back up and hear this all over again. And so I have to be careful what I say because it'll be held against me forever, right? Um, so uh, I thought what would be helpful is to have you hear from the Urban and Renewal Authority and RTD just to give you a little background on the long uh, time that's gone into this just to get where we are today because there was a two year plus process to really s start to have all these agencies work together to figure out how to how to select a developer and move forth with this project. So Bill Soroy from RTD who heads up the transit oriented development program for RTD and Maureen Fair who's the executive director of the Urban Renewal Authority will talk about that so I'll turn this over to you Murray. Uh, 
and what RTD is going to do at that commuter rail, they are required to have 400 parking spaces by opening day. And opening day is going to be in 2016. So their plans show that they're going to have a big surface parking lot where the RTD parking ride is today. So right now where the RTD parking ride is now is 250 parking spaces. So they were going to take their parking lot and go all the way up to the hill where the old gun club was and where there's a, another parking lot for the, uh, for the theater. So that entire area is nine acres. It was going to be all one big parking lot. And so, so what happened is city council was thinking about that and said, you know, that is not a great use for that land because that is great land right next to Old Town, which we all love and think is fabulous. It's right off of Wadsworth. It's a great piece of land. So we started thinking, is there a better use for this land? So we started talking with our friends at um, RTD because they own the majority. They own five of those eight, eight, or nine acres and said, you know, what do you guys think? Do you want to team up and do something special with that land? <coughs> so I'll let, um, I'll let Bill talk about us being a, uh, a pilot program. But what we've done is together, the city of Arvada, the Urban Renewal Authority, and RTD um, bought up the land. So they own uh, five acres, we bought up an acre, and the city bought up a couple acres. So now all that is controlled by us. And we're pitching our hat together, and we went out, and for two years we have been working together on a plan of what we want to do there and what kind of a developer we want. So back, I guess it was last spring, we sent out to the development community what's called an uh, RFQ, a request for qualifications to the big developers in the community and said, you know, we have this great piece of land. And we had a great response. Ten different development firms came forward and identified that they would be interested. From that, we whittled it down to five firms and we interviewed them. They did a, um, a request for a proposal which gives us a little bit more detail and from that we chose Trammel Crow and since then we have been working with Trammel Crow to get to where we are today where they have a few concept plans that they want to show you. So with that let me turn it over to Bill. One of the things like Lauren said is we, we um, like I said, Bill Soroy again with RTD. Um, on the TOD side of RTD, about three years ago, we decided that we wanted to be a little bit more proactive in, in searching out opportunities and partnerships with local jurisdictions. And we quickly uh, zeroed in on Old Town just because of all the work that had already been done. Um, you know, the city had done a lot of planning associated with the environmental process that we had gone through. Um, they had done a lot of planning related to what they wanted to see from a vision and from a development standpoint. Um, and really, it, it kind of set the stage for what we think would be a great opportunity. The other thing that was kind of part of this is that we always had in our environmental document or plans for the station that we would eventually go to a parking structure. So um, we thought, is there a way that we can work with the city and the urban renewal authority to look to accelerate that? Um, so that's kind of where the discussion started. And we said, well, you know, and if we can do development associated with that, that would be great, but you know the idea of putting this parking structure together um, for opening day was kind of our priority, and I know Bill will talk a little bit about where we're at on that. But you know, we really, um, I think, would say that Arvada is a model for how we look at doing things in, in terms of this because they've been a great partner um, it, from you know from the city side, from the urban renewal authority side, and I think from the community side too as well in terms of looking at this. What we're trying to do is to really complement what is going on in the old town and make it, you know, a better place. And also kind of at the same time look at the station and say how can we make it, you know, function even better and integrate it better with old town and potentially with new development. So that's just a real brief overview. I think, I think at this point we would have turned over to Bill if, unless there's any questions for Lori and I. Are there any questions on the process from the public side? Okay, um, again, my name's Bill Mosier and I run the Trammel Crow office here. I wanted to do a couple of things before we get to the plan and one is how we got here. Two is who are we? Um, Trammel Crow Company it was founded in Dallas, Texas in the 40s. Uh, D Denver is their longest office uh, since then. Uh, we've, they were in da Dallas first, then Denver. Now we're in 15 markets across the country. So we've been here almost 60 years. 
uh, operating continuously in Colorado, and we've got a lot of name projects that you all probably know about and heard about that we've been involved with over the years. Uh, Trammell Crow in 2007 uh, was bought by CBRE, which happens to be a public company, uh, largest real estate services firm in the world, which is a little disconcerting to us when we were purchased. Um, but the good thing that happened in all of that is that all of our brokerage and operations from a property management standpoint went to CBRE. Uh, they spun off Trammell Crow as an independently operated subsidiary. So we went from 6,000 employees to about 185 employees, and we went from all these offices to 15 offices. And so we're in most of the major markets in the country, the major um, metro markets. And so we're, we're primarily now uh, a, a city urban um, developer in Houston, Dallas, LA, San Francisco, Seattle, Denver, Phoenix, Chicago, Washington, DC, uh, places like that. Uh, so we're very entrepreneurial, uh, but we also have a large parent that gives us great wherewithal. And so besides being around for over 60 years, uh, we are financial, very secure. We're probably the, the most sound development company right now in the country, which isn't saying a whole lot after the recession, but it says something that we're still here. Um, so Trammell Crow Company here in Colorado <laughs> has been multi-product. So we have done retail, healthcare, office, industrial, hotel, uh, a whole variety of uh, public-private uh, partnerships. And so we active, we're active in a variety of areas. We're active in the city of Denver. We're active in various suburbs. We've, we've developed in Golden, Greenwood Village, Aurora, uh, Arvada. Uh, we own a, a retail shopping center over on Sheridan, for, for example. Um, we've been, we did the Lakewood City Center across from Belmar. Uh, so a variety of those kinds of projects. Um, I have run this operation since 2006. Uh, I am a Denver native. I happen to have grown up on the other side of the freeway at Kipling uh, in Wheat Ridge, uh, just below Wheat Ridge High School, uh, where I went to junior high school and ele in elementary school, rather. And then we got transferred out. I came back to Denver in 1990. Uh, had family here before then. So I'm a Colorado native, and this is my home, and this is where I raise my family and my kids and, um, and live in Denver. Um, my background has been almost entirely in urban redevelopment. I ran, actually I was kind of a counterpart of what Marine does today. I ran the Urban Renewal Authority in Tucson, uh, which was a private profit. It wasn't a, a it was a little bit of a different thing because they got rid of the Urban Renewal Authority and created a development corporation. And so we, we were very active and I became the executive director of that and did that for 12 years. Then decided to move to Denver, uh, back home, and I ran the Downtown Denver Partnership during the 90s. So was very active in urban redevelopment in downtown. Uh, I came back to do that for five years and Denver was going crazy so I ended up there 10. So it was a fun time overall uh, in that arena. Then I went off uh, into the private development business, uh, had my own company, merged with Trammell Crow in 2006. In that time period, uh, we've developed over a billion dollars in the core of downtown Denver alone. As an example, uh, the Convention Center Hotel, the Hyatt Regency Convention Center Hotel we did, uh, the Webb Municipal Building, we've done a variety of public-private partnerships. Uh, we've done a 400,000 square foot office building at Denver Union Station. We did DeVita's corporate headquarters. Uh, we've done industrial, we've done condo buildings uh, for residential, uh, medical office both at CU and at Denver Health. Uh, so a very active uh, portfolio in the real estate business. Uh, one of the things that I have had a keen interest in and that our office has therefore taken an interest in is uh, with the light rail uh, was the advent of transit-oriented development. And we have really tried, uh, not a sole focus, but to really focus on opportunities at transit-oriented sites. Uh, the most notable one that we've been involved in uh, for many years is Denver Union Station. Uh, we developed the two main office buildings that are there, and we also are the owner's representative for the nonprofit group that put together uh, the plans for Denver Union Station. So we, we built the light rail, the heavy rail, the bus facility, um, and the streets and plazas that are coordinated with that. So a lot of the public improvements associated with Denver Union Station. So we've done a lot of work with RTD. Uh, we did a condominium project at Louisiana Station, which is at I-25 in Louisiana, down uh, by Pearl Street, for those of you who are familiar with Denver. Uh, and, um, and so those are, 
uh, two of the transit-oriented development sites, and now uh, we're, we were looking for others. One of the key transit-oriented sites that we were interested in and have followed for a number of years is here in Old Town. Um, I've, I've always kind of followed what goes on in Old Town because I'm a downtown guy. I love the, I love the, the history here, uh, the, the nature of the retail. My wife owns a retail store. She's a single proprietor of a dress shop in downtown Denver, so for 30 plus years I've seen what it takes to be a retailer in, in a downtown area. And so I appreciate what has happened for those of you who own businesses in Old Town. I, I acknowledge that and, and congratulate you for that. But we have an interest in uh, how do you make Old Town a better, stronger uh, place and keep it authentic and independent and local. And so I want to make it very clear that one of the main reasons we're here is because of Old Town. And I think one of the reasons we were selected overall is that we really tried to figure out every way possible in a design sense to connect and support and, and thrive in and with Old Town, not to be turning our backs to it, not to be separate from it. And so the relationship with Old Town is one of the things that we're both wanted to take advantage of and that we're also struggling with because it's down the hill. So how do we make that connection? How do we really help the retail and help the the restaurants and help the growth of Old Town uh, with what we do. So that's something for you to keep in mind uh, during the question and answer session. So um, that's kind of how we came to this, is a very urban orientation, a mixed use orientation, uh, supporting uh, downtown areas, uh, and uh, seeing the growth that transit can bring. I am not a person who thinks that because you put in a light rail line that you suddenly turn around your economy in an area. I think light rail is one aspect of the access quotient and the, and the livability of an area. So if it wasn't for the light rail, we might not be here. If it wasn't for Old Town, we'd probably still be here, but you put the two together and we were very interested in this and very pleased to be selected. And so we really come here uh, honored to be selected and, and really pleased to be working with you all and with the community. Uh, the community has been terrific because people uh, have a real uh, desire to see Old Town be prosperous. And so I think to the extent that we can help that, uh, you all will support us. And to the extent we hurt that, you'd probably be a little dismayed. So we understand what that uh, quotient is. Um, so let me go through, uh, if I could, uh, a little bit of background. You know, this isn't a very good slide. In fact, some of these slides aren't going to be very good with all these lights on. But uh, this kind of talks about some of our history that I just reviewed. But just in Metro Denver alone, uh, 1.1 billion since 2009. That's a pretty amazing statistic if you really think about the recession that's happened. Um, we, we're very blessed to have had some great projects that have kept us busy. Uh, so the next slide um, talks a little bit about <laughs> which you all can't see, and this is this is on the actually this is on the the Arvada website, uh, right, Wendy, and and is accessible so you can see this. But this really talks about uh, how we responded. Our vision for this site has, is we, what we want to do is be responsive to the community's vision for the site. So we didn't invent the vision. Uh, we want to we wanna abide by the vision and express the vision and nurture that vision, but this is, this is the vision that was expressed in the RFQ. So let me go through this. Um, th and the vision is to create a vibrant place really that supports, supports Old Town. So uh, an urban, what does urban mean to people? I mean, for some people it means congestion and a lot of people and all that sort of thing. For me, urban is a placemaking exercise. It's about pedestrians, it's about people being able to live and walk and move through a community with, with a lot of different pieces to it. Urban is mixed use, uh, it's residential, it's restaurants, it's retail, it's churches, it's all the things that you, that we all associate that we want. Uh, to serve us in our neighborhoods. So the second point, pedestrian oriented, uh, which we'll talk about, that's a little bit of a challenge here. Uh, the third point is mixed use. Um, we, we, you won't see the mixed use really in our plans because it's hard to show a concept plan of mixed use, but we'll talk about what that mixed use means. Vibrant, uh, we really want it to be a place that's kind of happening, that's, that's fun and active, but more from a pedestrian side and a side that supports the transit and supports Old Town and not necessarily just people driving in and out. Um, multimodal, cars, bikes, pedestrians, 
trains, buses, you've got it all here already. And so we, what we want to do is meld that together in a more cohesive way that works for everybody as they use it. Um, I can't even read these. Quality design, um, RNL. We've got some RNL representatives here over in the over in the sides, but we've got some RNL in the back, so they're listening. Uh, RNL has done a lot of transit-oriented development master planning and design work. We've worked with them on a couple of occasions, uh, so we've got a track record with RNL, uh, and we really selected them because we thought they had uh, the history in the West of working on transit-oriented development having urban design capabilities in a bigger context, and then also they'll be working with us, obviously, to design the individual project. But to be urban and to be mixed use and to be vibrant, you've got to have quality design. You've got to have quality buildings with uh, good placemaking and good public streets. Um, connected is the next one, and, and this one, is, to me, is the most important. Connected is what all this is about. Mixed use is about connections. Pedestrians about connections. Urban, to me, means connections. Mixed use is about connections. So the real challenge with this site is how do we connect with the different aspects of what we're building, but then also how do we connect with Old Town and the greater community. We'll talk about both east of Wadsworth, west of Wadsworth, existing residential areas. We want to be a pass-through in a sense, and you'll see what I mean by that in a moment. Um, a distinct character, um, you know, uh, and, and nothing against certain kinds of development, but we don't want somebody to take a picture of this and wonder, you know, this could be in Ohio or South Greenwood Village or whatever. I mean, we would like something that when somebody takes a picture of aspects of this that they go, wow, that's Old Town Arvada, and we'll talk about some of the iconic opportunities that I think we have to do there. Um, what is that? Less surface parking. Less surface parking. Less surface parking. Um, actually, in many ways, urban and pedestrian also means less surface parking. Now, we talk about density. A lot of you think about density when you think about urban, right? You go, oh, we don't like density. What, we are, what we're going to be talking about, and we'll chat a little bit about density, I think of den people think of density in terms of height and the height of buildings and the people. I really think of density as trying to get cars off of lots and tucked away. And that creates some density because you have more people that can live in an area because they're living on top of or over or whatever with the car and the car's not taking over. If we did suburban apartment development, for instance, we would have huge surface parking lots. And what we want to do from a vibrant, pedestrian, connected standpoint is get rid of some of that. We're not going to get rid of all of it, and you'll see that we're not going to get rid of all of it. But to the extent we can, we'd like to get uh, the structured get some structured parking into these complexes. Uh, and then sustainable is if we do all of that correctly, and particularly the connection part and the multimodal part and the mixed use part, we will be a more sustainable neighborhood. It'll be more connected, be more efficient, uh, and people will tend to, to operate within their own uh, neighborhood. So that's Arvada's TOD vision. Uh, our plan adopted that vision and want to express that vision, and obviously the devil's in the details on that. We can all talk a good game, but what does all this mean? And that's part of the exercise we'll be going through over the next few months. So next slide. Um, I'll have to get up here and show you parts of this, but this is uh, option A program. And the option A program is strictly related to the property from Grandview on the north, uh, the Wadsworth Highway, not Old Wads, but Wadsworth on the right, Vance on the left, and 56th on the south. What's that? Oh, you're going to be Van? Okay. So this is 56th, 55th, this area here, which is, as mentioned, is the park and ride. Now, in this case, what we did is we said, and this was pretty responsive to the RFP, we said, okay, the RFP says we want to get rid, as Maureen said, we want to get rid of these 400 surface parking spots and have this whole land taken up by a parking lot that is buses and people walking to and forth and crossing the street and going up the hill to the train. Uh, let's put it into a, a more compact facility. So in the upper right, right at the corner of Grandview and Wadsworth, which as you all know, isn't really a corner of Grandview and Wadsworth because they don't intersect. Grandview's up here and Wadsworth is doing that. Um, so that's really not a corner, but we put the RTD facility there. And that's a 400 car parking garage. Uh, I think it was four levels uh, in our original design. And then, and you could come in and out off of Wadsworth. We could al also, we figured out a way to do it off of 56th. 
And then we had some uh, apartments and hotel and retail uh, focused around that and tried to focus them around 56th and have 56th be a good east-west connection and then turn Vance into a strong north-south connection recognizing that Vance is going up the hill and that's part of our challenge is how do we make Vance and 56th for people who are crossing from the east side of Wadsworth, for instance, and coming across and want to go to the train station, how do they do that in, a, in an easy way? And it's not easy. You've got to cross a big old street and then you've got to climb up a pretty big hill. So uh, we then went to, and, and I'll give you some metrics here just so you're uh, familiar. 400 parking spots. Uh, the bus facility would be across the street on Vance, uh, south of the Flower Building, basically, between Old Wads and Vance. So that's not shown here. Uh, but there is an eight bay bus facility that's part of this whole project. Uh, 250 residential units plus 180 others. So roughly, call it around 400 housing units on this nine acre site. And then we had about um, uh, 46,000 square foot of retail, and I'll talk about the retail in a moment. And then we had a, we're trying to look at, because there's a lot of interest in the community, to try to get a hotel on this site, and so we showed a 100 room hotel. Pretty hard to get a hotel at this time, but if we have a site there for it, we might be able to do it sometime in the future. So we then looked at option B, which is uh, really our preferred option, and the next slide, if you could. Um, what this does is take uh, the full Grand View alignment from Old Wads to Wadsworth. So Old Wads is on the left of this slide. Uh, Grand View is running across the top. The bus facility uh, was going to be a surface facility at this location, uh, just south. And, and this isn't quite accurate because the flower building and the pavilion are, are here. We didn't cover them up. We didn't tear them down. Um, and that exists here between Owads and Vance, and then the same nine-acre development over there. That's just for bus routine? That, that, in the original plan, that's just for bus activity. What we proposed in this plan is that there be a parking garage for the commuter parking underground below the bus facility and bring all the commuter parking and the bus facility all into one structure and one of the interesting things which we'll show you in a minute is that because of the hillside, we can build the garage going down the hill so that it doesn't stand up and it's not a facility that you see. So in, a, in some ways, it's kind of tucked in behind the movie theater. And you'd see it, it'd be open air, it's not going to be underground, and yet it's kind of going down this hill. Um, and the advantage to that is that you get all the commuter traffic, all the RTD, park and ride, right there on one site at the train station. And so this is actually quite convenient for people because um, they can walk to the bus, to the train, they can exchange train to bus, they can do whatever. They don't have to walk up the hill, they don't have to walk across the site. So this is a pretty uh, interesting solution to us and that's what we presented. Does that also provide the parking for the hotel and the business? No. So it could provide some par uh, hotel parking. And we'll talk about that. So the minimum that we need to provide per the RTD requirements is 400 parking spaces for commuters. So that's people that are driving to this site to take the train or the bus. So we have to do that. So this plan, at a minimum, will have 400 spaces. If you take this garage, and I'm going to show you in a minute, if you take this garage all the way down to the level of the movie theater, so it's at grade with the movie theater, we think we can actually get upwards of 600 to 700 spaces. We don't have a full count yet because we really need to get into design, which we haven't yet. And we could have the 400 commuter spaces and we could have, say, 200, 250 public spaces that would be for the public that are coming to Old Town. So there would be a parking facility for Old Town uh, that would support Old Town and support any other development that were to be there in the future and we're hoping could be supportive of the hotel because we probably can't put the residential parking into this garage, but we probably could put <coughs> hotel parking into this garage. The residences, I mean, you all know, if you're going home, you want to park where you live. You don't want to like park in a big old garage and then walk all the way across the street. So and this down won't be a for fee parking area? This is not a, well, um, that I can't answer. Is this a for fee? Do you guys charge? Well, it could be part of our parking management which is there's three conditions under which they, that would be 
charge people at the transit parking to be charged, which is if somebody parked over 24 hours like they're going to the airport, or if somebody um, was parking there from outside the taxing district, which would be well outside of the Arvada state limits, or if we have a certain number of reserve spaces. So those are the three conditions under which we can charge. They would charge their transit riders in that case. And, and then if we no do, more free parking for if bus. We do, if we, what's that? No, no more free parking for bus riding then. No, yeah, yeah, would. I mean, oh, yeah. But anybody who's parking there that's going to, just going to work or doing that, and they're, they're, less, they're for less than 24 hours, they park for free. Thank so, you. so you'll still be able to use the garage for that commuter purpose. Is there an elevator in there? How do they get up to this thing? Very good question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you there, but can I, I'm gonna finish the land use plan and then I'll come back to the garage, okay? Um, let me talk about this land use plan for a minute. Again, 56, we don't have a final alignment here. This is roughly where 56 is today. Our objective is to connect 56 to Vance in a nice pedestrian environment so that people who are either living in this project or uh, in this development or are living on the other side of Wadsworth to the east could cross over and have a good pedestrian experience and walk up to the facility. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. Um, we're looking at, uh, at the southwest corner of 56th and Wadsworth, uh, about, um, well, we're really looking at the other corner of the B6 there. That's uh, roughly 28,500 square feet of retail. Uh, we know that people would like to see a, a marketplace there, a grocer, that's a first priority, but retail. It could be restaurants, it could be whatever, and we're, we're going to be evaluating the marketability of that site for a retail establishment. Obviously, it's right on Wadsworth. It's not going to be a big box. It's not a lot of room, so 28,000 feet we think is as big as we can get, and this shows some parking on it, but also at the corner, which is our hope, is at the corner of 56 and Wadsworth that the building's coming up to the corner and creates a more pedestrian, urban kind of feel, and then the parking is, is to the south and around it. And then we're looking at uh, a first phase of housing uh, along Vance. And then we would develop the upper lot as the market allows and have a combination. In this case, we put the hotel along Vance. Now, many people think the hotel, which it might end up here, but many people think the hotel ought to be along Wadsworth because the hotel needs exposure and signage. We would love, our, our preference, if we could, is to put the hotel as close to Old Town and as close to the transit center as possible. So we really like the hotel being at the corner of Vance and Grandview because we think we can create Vance and Grandview being a pretty, pretty neat little area and put the hotel there and have it be uh, more of a destination type of hotel and not just you're driving down Wadsworth looking for a hotel. But if you're in the neighborhood, you would say, hey, you ought to go to this cool little hotel that's on Vance and it's part of Old Town and all that sort of thing. So we're going to work on that. And the good thing is that if we can provide some of the parking across the street, we can make that hotel, one, more affordable, uh, and two, not have a big surface parking lot so it looks like a, any old hotel uh, with parking lot. And then the balance of that block, uh, which just shows buildings, is uh, apartments or residential, let's say. I mean, right now, with the condominium market the way it is, it's probably not condos. We would love to do condos, but right now we're looking primarily residential. The residential along 56th would hopefully have some first floor retail or coffee shops or places to eat or whatever. Um, but the residential is uh, oriented towards, um, I think, um, a, a type of person that wants to be near Old Town, wants to be near the station. Uh, maybe works downtown, maybe works out west at the Federal Center. Uh, who knows where they might be going uh, from a, a bus standpoint. They might be connected. It would be, there would be rental, but I don't think it's a one large big apartment complex with surface parking and all that. We're hopeful that it'll probably be rental, uh, just because that's who wants to live in these areas generally. But we would like to see how it could be uh, three, four stories, probably stick-built construction to keep it affordable and have the housing somehow tuck under and disappear. In, individually owned and rented. Individually or owned. One company owning all of it and renting. Uh, <laughs> or, I'm not sure I'd want the whole block to be owned by one company and uh, we'll, we'll work on that. I, I'd like to see some smaller scale stuff if possible, but we haven't gotten that. <coughs> but it's a good question. What is this going to do to our view in Old Town? 
Okay, that's a, that's a good question. In the, uh, the bus facility, the bus facility is actually below Grandview at the current teller lot site height. So the bus facility actually, other than perhaps the canopies that, you know, for people that are going to be riding the buses, uh, we don't have a design for that yet. The bus facility and the parking facility are going down, so they're not going up. And those views from Grandview looking south and west, which we get, how important those are, are preserved. Um, the development here, when it gets up to Grandview and Wadsworth, is going to, what is that, is that 30 feet right now, that slope? Yeah. Roughly 30 feet, so we, we might come up there uh, a story or two above Grandview between Vance and Wadsworth. Now that's something that we want to talk a little bit about because there's some opportunities on Grandview as to what we do. For the sake of Old Town, I think having another side of the street would really help the retail. And we'd like to bring some of the residents right up to Grandview to access, be able to access Old Town. Uh, on the other hand, we've also looked at, there's an old trolley line that was there. We're looking at some open space. And maybe this development sets back a little bit from Grandview. And you end up with more of a public space on the south side of Grandview. So those are, those are some of the things that we'll look at. And I'll show you uh, some, some thoughts on that. Is there a plan in place for the massive social problems that could come with this? Development? Well, hopefully we won't add to any massive social problems. But we understand, we understand what your concern is about having more people live in the area. Uh, but hopefully there are quality folks that are uh, contributing to the community. Well, I, there are homeless in the area, you know, and I feel that there are probably going to be more places for homeless to be. I'm not advocating getting rid of the homeless. I'm advocating a plan. Well, obviously, for us to sell this as a safe, good place to live, we're, we're going to be with you trying to deal with that homeless issue. But we're not. How good. and where are you going to filter all these people in and out? We live on the east side of Wadsworth, off of 55th Avenue, and already our traffic has increased probably threefold. And what people don't know is. 55th Avenue ends in an industrial area. Right. And we've got this constantly. How are you going to filter all these people in and out of here on a daily basis without making an absolute? <coughs> Wadsworth is a nightmare yeah. now. Absolutely. Old Town is not developing. There's no room to move around in Old Town. You're, you're putting masses in here, and you have no way to move them around. Well, I think, I mean, actually, I mean, we'll have to do traffic studies and we'll have to be looking at that. Wadsworth is a state highway. It's got, you guys got great access to this site. I got to tell you, from my standpoint, um, I, I'm not from the same standpoint you are, but from our standpoint, this site being right on Wadsworth at 56 with that double turn lane, I mean, there's good access to advance in 56 from our viewpoint and but so it's going to involve at least another stoplight at 56. there may have to be a stoplight at 56. and actually we would that? we'd obviously be in favor of the stoplight at 56 to get people in and out of there and to help the pedestrian place do you see so, families living in these residences or just uh, individuals or couples i think it's probably more individuals and couples that live in these transit-oriented sites uh, that want to be close to old town and close to the bus facility What's this going to do to the flour mill as far as access to the flour mill and being able to do functions there? You're taking away all the parking and stuff that Oh, no. I, hopefully, hopefully we improve that. So let's go to... Okay, so, uh, so let's, let's look at this. This is a view from Vance looking towards the parking facility. The grand view is up <coughs> on the top, and unfortunately you can't see this very well with the light. But um, this is... The bus facility is at the tiller lot site. The building that you see in the left, the little white thing that sticks up is flour mill. We're back from the flour mill under this design, which is very preliminary, looking at stacking this uh, thing going down. Uh, why don't you flip to the next one? Oh, that's not very good. Uh, that's looking from the top down. So go to the next. Um, here, here's maybe a little better view of it. Um, if we go, well, first of all, if there's 400 commuter spaces and that's all, then in the evenings and the weekends, is this right, Bill? I think in the evenings and the weekends, those, site, those parking spaces could be used by people. This would be hugely supportive of, of the flower building. 
I mean, any events that are being held there, et cetera. Under no circumstances in any plan that we've drawn does that building go away. And in fact, everything that we've tried to do is to support those functions. And, and we're here to make all of those things work. We want Old Town to work. We want the Flower Building to work. So those, that can be there for the evenings and weekends. If we go to the 200 parking spaces that are public, then there could be parking there for uh, daytime use also. But how close to the flour mill are they going to be? Because you've got people that are in wheelchairs. I mean, the historical so, society yes. is not all young people. Right, understood. So you're going to have to have access for the people to all One of the, that. There's, now have to there's, go there across the parking lot. Absolutely. And, Interestingly, our interest on that is aligned with the same historical society interest in that. We need to figure out a way to get these parkers safely to the bus facility and to the light rail facility, or the, the commuter rail facility. So at Vance and at Old Watts, we need to have better, wider sidewalks than we have today. The other thing that we're looking at is at the Vance end of it, is we're looking at, could there be an elevator that would take people from the bottom levels of the parking and people who cross at 56 could come into an open plaza <coughs> at 56th and Vance, and whether you're parking or you're a pedestrian, you could get into an elevator, go up the elevator, cross over a bridge, and drop down on the Grandview without ever having to cross these streets. And that way, one, you're not interfering with the train traffic, you're avoiding all the vehicular traffic, and you end up on the platform for the trains without that. So you're talking about putting a bridge over Grandview? No, no, no. Not over Grandview, over the bus facility. And the railroad tracks. And that's not a plan. We don't have a plan for it. We're not there yet. We're looking at it. Here's the issue that I think there is in Arvada for the commuter rail. You've got a freight line that goes right alongside to the north side of this. Mm -hmm. And you could be getting out of the, you could be a citizen, a resident, coming from the south, walking from your house to go catch the train. Or you could be parking in the commuter parking facility, and you're standing there, and you can't get to the train because the freight train's going by. The freight train goes by, you're now able to cross, and your train's gone. So one of the things we've looked at is, we don't want to do a tunnel, because tunnels aren't safe and they're expensive <coughs> and they're underground, is an open air, uh, short uh, bridge that would take you from the parking facility and the bus facility over the train tracks and drop you down on the plaza south of Grandview on the Vance end so that the views to the mountains are maintained. And so that's what we're looking at. When we have more detailed plans, we will have another meeting and go through that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I love the idea of the development. I know it may be different than most people. I mean, I see it done very good on 525. And really, I own two retail businesses. I, I think that'd be great for that. But my one question is uh, with retail business, it's all about repeat customers. Right. And I don't see how you're going to put a 100 person hotel there with that train go by blowing up its horn for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I've lived here for years, and I still go up here. That is an issue. Uh, it's been dealt with in downtown Denver. They got a no-whistle deal going through that part of downtown where people now own $800,000. Can you tell me there's no more train whistle? I'm sold. I can't tell you.
Typically, this costs probably around 350 to 500,000 per intersection to do this. That's crazy. The city, I did the quiet zones that we have in the city right now on the Union Pacific track. We picked the easiest, cheapest ones to do. Those are the ones that have the medians at 72nd, at Sims, at Pierce. And there's one, oh, and we're over on turns into Kipling. That was because we could put a median in to prevent people from going around those tracks. We were able to do that for about uh, $70,000 per intersection. And the city has budgeted on the Union Pacific to go ahead and do these quiet zones, and it is costing us somewhere on the order of $350,000 to $500,000 per intersection to do that. RTD, RTD is going to be doing that at every intersection along the goal line. By doing that, that eliminates the requirement for the trains to pump their horns. Yes. Both the freight trains and the commuter rail. Now, there will be some headaches between here and now, then, because while they're doing testing, the quiet zones will be in effect. But once they've got it under operation, there will be quiet zones. This will not mean that there will be absolutely no horns. If you've got kids walking along the tracks and the railroad engineers, either the commuter rail engineers or the freight engineers, see a dangerous situation, they must blow the horns. It's up to them. I have to tell you, we've had very good response on the quiet zones up on the Union Pacific tracks. They have shut down the horns tremendously. Um, I think they use them elsewhere now. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I've got a friend who lives up at Sim Street, up about at 76, and before they had the quiet zone, Hang on Hank came through every night, and he would pull them to the, that's their nickname for him. But with the quiet zones, we have had really good response from the railroad engineers as they come through. I get calls when there's construction along the tracks because all of a sudden they have to start a hole. Why are they blowing the horns? Well, this is why. And the people understand it. But it has been a tremendous benefit to that neighborhood up there. RTD's made that commitment to spend that kind of money. I mean, we're going to have to install traffic lights at a lot of these intersections because wherever you make a left turn going over the tracks, we've got to make sure you can get out of there before those gates come down. So advance at Salisbury, at uh, Lamar, at Tabor, at Rob, and at Miller, there are going to be lights added, and Independence. There will be lights, traffic lights added to get people off the tracks in time for the trains to come through. But it will be quiet zones. Can we get Bill around the applause? It's RPE that's spending the money, it's not me. I'm just, I'm just reviewing the plans, but that's the plan. So, with the coming of the goal line, that will mean, and hopefully if we finally get through um, with Union Pacific on the north, almost every crossing in the city of Arvada will be a quiet zone. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. In the north as well. In the north as well. Like I said, we've got four crossings that we've done, um, <laughs> and we're in the process of doing four more. It's, taking us a lot longer, unfortunately, because Union Pacific has to do the design and build and everything else, and it, unfortunately, it's not their highest word. I think that might be another meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's, what, that's what's going to happen with the train whistles. So the people in the hotel will not be hearing the train, as of all the people who live along the tracks. So that will be a tremendous benefit. Now, the people in the hotel might feel the train, so we'll deal with that. <laughs> so one of the things I wanted to do is finish uh, the information I've got by 7, so anybody who has to leave knows they at least saw everything, and then I'm, I'm not ending the meeting at 7. I just want to make sure everybody, anybody who has to leave, because there's already been a few, at least see all the stuff. So let me, let me just uh, go through, um, keep going. I can go through more stuff on the, the parking, which is, nothing's been designed. There are no contracts let. We're, we're just brainstorming things. So I'll take more questions on that as we go. 
I just wanted to explain that uh, because the existing nine acre site is a park and ride, we can't do much until we get this park and ride moved into this new facility. So from a development standpoint, you're not going to see anything right around the corner. It's going to be a 2015, 16, 17, 18 kind of time frame. So what we've identified is just looking here, one of the first phases, and we haven't uh, gone any further than this, is that we really view the first phase as trying to make 56th a street and, and start developing off of 56th on both sides of the street to create two sides to that street and make that the first phase. So the retail and the housing south of 56 would be our priority. And then uh, the hotel would probably come at a later date and some of the infill uh, going north. Um, so next slide, uh, the later phases starts to infill that uh, Wadsworth Grandview site. And remember that Wadsworth Grandview site is, it's a tough one. It's down below Grandview. It's on Wadsworth, it's, you know, we're going to have a lot of design challenges there to make that a place that people want to live and go to. And so we'll get focused on, on that. Uh, next slide, there's really only two slides left. And so I want to just talk about this for a minute. And since young people can read this, but I can't. Um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about the outreach and the process going forward, uh, uh, just to be clear about it. First off, OldTownTOD.org is a website. We will post these slides, uh, meeting notices, anything that you want to learn. Uh, we're working with the Arvada uh, Public Relations and Communications Group on that. Uh, notify Me Alert System, you can sign up on the website so you get notified of uh, meetings and that sort of thing. Uh, we've already had an article in the Arvada Report. We'll continue to work with Wendy and others to make sure that we're communicating through the venues that you all use to, to learn about things. I'm committed to doing uh, community meetings with you all. This is our first one. We've appeared before city council, uh, but this is our first community meeting and we will do that throughout the process. Uh, we, will, we will do it at times when we really can use the input. So I'm, you know, we're gonna come and present things and, and get input and reaction to it. Uh, we're not going to make everybody happy, uh, I can guarantee you that, but we'll sure listen to people, whether they're pro or con, and at least get a read on people. We learn a lot through these meetings. I've been through a lot of community meetings on our projects. We never make everybody happy. We're not going to make everybody happy, but we can learn a lot from listening to the pros and the cons and the concerns and take that to heart because we're selling your community. And if there's things that you're nervous about or don't like or whatever, I take that to heart because that means I got a negative that I'm selling. So the train is an example. Why does anybody want to live next to the train? So some of the things that Bill laid out are some of the issues that we care about too. Um, and the process for approvals, there will be two types of processes here. The transit elements, the public part of this on the west side of Vance where the station and the commuter parking, that's kind of a public process and we'll be working with Arvada on that because that's a city project. It's related to RTD. There's federal monies involved. There's a variety of things that are going into that. Uh, we'll be building it, designing it, and carrying that out. Uh, but that's one set of activities. The nine acre site is viewed as a private development from our viewpoint. So we will go through all, the, we got to go through a rezoning process, go through the planning and commission hearings, have the community meetings, go to city council, um, we are not looking to short circuit, advance anything too quickly. I can't do anything on this site. I wish I could now. I can't do anything on this site, maybe other than the retail anytime soon. Uh, so we'll, we'll go through that process. So what is that process? The next slide will talk a little bit about uh, trying to get us to next spring. Uh, so you can see what you might anticipate. If you go about halfway down, it's kind of where we're at. There's a, there's a lot of dates on here, but um, uh, transit element approvals in September 30th, we were looking at trying to get a decision on, you know, are we gonna do this the way we're talking about that? That has not happened uh, because we gotta figure out this, is it 400 car garage, is it 600? How does this thing get built? How does it relate to the theater? Uh, how do you get the buses in and out of, the, of, these, of these two areas between Old Wadsworth and Vance? Um, going down, um, our hope overall is that somewhere in March timeframe or in the spring, 
that we have a joint development agreement with the city and the Urban Renewal Authority on the nine acre site that kind of says here's the game plan for how we're going to proceed. Uh, we may or may not have our zoning by then. We will probably initiate the zoning process uh, in the next few weeks uh, from a zoning concept standpoint and then be going through that process into the spring until it gets approval through city council. So we would probably expect another community meeting in January uh, so that we can be much more definitive with you about what the rezoning would be and what that process would be. Uh, it's something right now we're just reviewing the Arvada zoning code and trying to understand those issues and, and which zone uh, we would be part of. But you all have zoning for these kind of sites next to a transit station, so we'll be going with that. Yeah? Um, are you going to have section 106 hearings for this area? Because the old trolley bed is a historical site, and it is federal involvement if you're using federal money. But we have no federal money on the other side of, on the east side of Vance. Uh, so there's no federal money involved in the trolley site. Uh, we're open on the trolley site as to it's not going to be a public project. It's part of our private project. And so we're open to what the trolley site is. Is it a plaza? Uh, does it get developed? Is it open space? Is it left alone? I mean, we're, we're we probably need to have a separate discussion about what that is. Well, even still, the, uh, the historical comes, um, the actual historical boundaries into where you're lumped with the, uh, the actual parking rights. And so I'm wondering if you're happy. Oh, I didn't know it was, well, is, it, I can is it west of Vance? <laughs> you know, we did 106 during the EIS. And what, what we have talked about the public transit administration about is we, we'll, we'll be doing what's called a reevaluation. Why wasn't there a public hearing then on section 106? There was a public hearing during the EIS. When was so, the EIS done? Uh, the EIS was done in 2009, 2008. So yeah, it was done several years ago. Um, but we, we've committed to FTA that we will do what's called a reevaluation. One of the areas that they want us to do is consultation with SHPO on 106 related to this. So we will be doing that. And so they will be- Will that be a public hearing? I'm sure it will be, yes. And this is part of that process. This process we're going through right now is part of that document process, yes. Yes, ma'am. My main concern is traffic. Yes. You said you might do a traffic study. And, you know, we all know here that if you drive north of Wadsworth, clear, as far, just about as far south, well, maybe we, by the time you get down to, to uh, Bellevue or something, uh, when we start running into traffic. But this section of Wadsworth is a horrible bottleneck. And you can, especially during the day, there are so many businesses, they, they change the timing of lights, so you're stopping at every stoplight. And I just don't see <coughs> how 400 people staying in a hotel and driving in and out to meals and shopping, it's going to be a disaster. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I don't know, I just came up Wadsworth in rush hour and I mean, I. I get, I get between downtown Denver and Wadsworth in 15 minutes generally. Wadsworth is <laughs> It didn't take me 15 minutes today, I'll tell you that. Well, Not during rush hour. I do want to advocate that we are building a train. And one of the, one of the attraction, attractiveness of doing the development next to the train is that people will use the train. And the whole, one of the whole concepts around transitory development is the idea that people would, would use their cars less. And there is document, you know, documented fact that when you do these kinds of developments in the way that Bill and Trammell was talking about in terms of making it pedestrian oriented, making it mixed use, that you can actually get people to use their cars less. So that is one of the advantages that we have here is we will have a train that people will be using and hopefully using their cars less because of that train. The train is going to go basically east-west and the traffic is north south. Well, there's also, bus, there's also buses that go north-south. So uh, let me let me be clear. Rush out. I mean, I get the traffic issue. I, I I live in an urban, dense area. I live. I use Colorado Boulevard. I use Spear Boulevard. I use I seventy, I twenty five. I mean, just coming out here, you know, a fifteen minute drive took forty minutes. I get I get all of that. We're not going to develop a site where our own customers can't go in and out. But I don't think that the density we're talking about here is going to be sway what's happening on Wadsworth. 
We will obviously be looking at those issues and you've got the more activity and the more businesses and the more retail and all the population growth that Arvada has, there's going to be more traffic. Hopefully, we're giving people an alternative to live in a place where they don't have to rely on their car. I can tell you in the developments we've done at transit-oriented sites, there is less car use. We will not design the, the apartments, believe it or not, to have the same amount of parking as we would in other apartment sites. I've done office buildings downtown next to Denver Union Station at one-fifth of the parking that's in the suburbs, and we have vacant parking spaces because people don't use it if they're trained on the transit. And it's not just the train, it's using the bus and it's the affiliation between the two. So our goal is to create a strong pedestrian kind of ethic that people will want to live here because the train and the bus are available to them. If they don't want to live there to access it, they're probably going to live somewhere else, very frankly. So we're selling that multimodal aspect of it, so. We have a problem in West Arvada where they're going to, working on that triangle, they tell us they're going to put a Walmart in there that we do not want. There's going to be more traffic and there's going to be more traffic east unless you have something set up for the traffic in the city. We might as well live in New York. <laughs> Amen. New York has much better transportation with yes. the southern <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm not really sure if you can answer this, maybe Maureen can, but oh, man. when did it go from what we voted on for light rail and RTD transit to 400 units and hotel and all this other stuff? That's not what we bought into. That's not what a lot of people, I didn't vote for it, but you mean voted for the transit? No, I did not. Oh, that this does that doesn't have to do with but the vote. But that's what I'm saying is, we voted for RTD. Now all of a sudden, there's all this humongous development around these train stations. When was the crossover? That happens everywhere. Who changed it? Does this does this transit go into you in Agenda 21? Is that what this is linked to? Are you familiar with you on Agenda 21? Google it. Yes, you are familiar. If you work for the government, you are familiar. And we don't want, one of the reasons we love Old Town and Arvada is because it has a small town atmosphere. And with 400 units, transit, you keep using this word transit. And that's not a good word for me. And you know, using streets and living by these streets are two different yeah, animals. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of the objection is all this huge density all of a sudden, and that's not what we want Old Town necessarily to be. We don't want all this huge density and all these people crammed in. I'm, I feel like I'm starting to live in China. Hell, New York looks good. Yes, ma'am. We really haven't we really haven't gotten into what the materials are or what the design looks like. I mean we're looking at the urban design issue of where where the transit, where the parking, where the development is, uh, how the street system works, but from a character standpoint I can't answer that yet. Because I mean, you're we'll, mentioning the hotel and that sort of thing. I mean those are very important things to ask. Right. They they are. And the sad thing is that the people who are developing in that case for Walmart, ten dollar Walmart Williams. They're the same people who are going to make aesthetic choices for us and therefore you. Right. Why not? And you still, you still have well, the new Okay, order. let's talk one at a time so we can. Well, the other is going to be the, is the new Arvada. Yeah. Build, 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 concrete, concrete, gasoline fumes, more traffic lights. Might have been better to the Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you take pictures of things that you like in Arvada and send them our way? We'll and we'll yes. take that into invitement. I mean, I think that's, those are the kinds of things we're going to be looking at. Uh, I don't want to 
I don't, we're not, we don't want to just be everywhere USA in what we're doing. So, right. Yes, ma'am. And then, okay, sir. Oh, I want way. you and the city of Arbeta, RTD to come talk to the Historical Society. That mill is our building. Nobody's even said anything to us that we know. And I think <laughs> you need to get us, you need to be more in contact with us because mm -hmm. you're really inputting us. You really are. Well, hopefully we'll we have no support of it. Demo or touch or move. You can't. Yeah, no, right. We're not. We don't want to. We don't want to. Yeah. But we made it very Be clear. Be happy to, to come and talk to you. We know that that is a sacred piece of property <laughs> yes. and we would never go and touch that. That That is um, a, his understanding based on what the city and or I have told him. That that what I'm talking about is he's coming up with these ideas with the parking lot. That does affect this morning. Yes, we that, have a and it does. Right. If we're not going to have be able to have that, we we're working to build finish the annex. We can't do it unless we know what you're right. doing. Exactly. Right, exactly. We, we will we will have a conversation. And, and why? Two meetings at the same time. What do you mean? Uh, they moved parking. Did you move the parking in Texas That was this one. They moved it. No. Okay, so we're going to talk, to talk about parking too here. No, no. no. The, originally, when they advertised this meeting on Notify Me, it said Old Town Parking, and that was at the schoolhouse. And when we moved in here, they had to buy it. So the parking was used. Don't know about the parking. Yes, sir. And then I've been here for about 50 years, and we have a little baby here in Old Town. And I remember what Old Town looked like 25 years ago. When it was like, this is Old Town before it's Ghost Town. And we look at all the fantastically wonderful things that happened I since then. Those. And as a business owner back then, you know, it's like, well, maybe I do a better life as a flipping burgers I or McDonald's or God forbid, I go to Walmart, as somebody put it. That's not true anymore today. And one of the reasons that makes the Old Town area as attractive as it is is that eclectic look that we have, yeah. the number of businesses that we have. There have been a lot of new businesses move in. Some of them have really brought in a tremendous number of jobs. These are really, some of them are really great jobs. I mean, you know, you're looking at some high-end jobs as well as entry-level jobs. So we like to keep that going. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it look good. I don't want to go back to where we were 20 years ago, quite frankly, because I wouldn't be here. You couldn't even so, walk Old Town 20 years ago. Oh, yes, you could. Oh, okay. I've been here all my life, too. So, so don't right. give us walking I have a home when, that's over in Grand you know, For 35 years, I've lived over there. Okay, let's. I've lived we will, we've got more people that would like to talk. We'll be civil. Let the man finish. <laughs> Some more folks that want to talk here, so let's keep going. 
But please, let's be civil with each other. Okay, sir. Um, I'm happy to see that it's R and L design uh, because uh, I was on the committee that helped design the new Lawrence, uh, and we came to them with pictures of the egg shell and a few other old buildings, and they gave us a two-story building since we only had a four-acre site. And they that built something I thought works in well with the committee instead of giving us some sort of glass and steel Bauhaus construction. So um, if they'll commit to you know integrating the look of old town to the new structures, then that would be reassuring, I think, to many. Thank you. Yeah. I have <laughs> right, some yes ma'am. Um, I, I can see that there's an awful lot of trying to be crammed into a pretty small area, and I can't believe I'm going to ask this of a developer, but was any consideration given to the open space at all or park area? No, um, <laughs> except in the, in the trolley area along Grandview, perhaps a setback there, but, um, and this is, this is a block diagram, so I don't know if this is where it's going to turn out either. We may end up saying we can't afford to do this this way because the rents are too high because the buildings are too complicated. I mean, we're, we're going to have to go through that process to make sure that we have facilities, whether they're residential, retail, whatever, that work for the marketplace and, in our view, add to the vibrancy of this area and give Arvada the kind of economic return that they want based on the infrastructure that they've invested in this area. And that's what our, that's what our objective is. For me to sell this and for this to be a successful development, I want it to read that it's Arvada. I would like it to, you know, I'm tending to want it to read as Old Town Arvada, but that's a little bit presumptuous. We're 30 feet down a hill. We're, you know, to make this look like an historic brick, you know, old warehouse district is probably not the right character to impose on it. But I think we want to have some characteristics that relate to Arvada's history, uh, to the train, uh, to the to the new future of Old Town, and those are some of the issues that we'll be looking at from a design standpoint. You don't have a design now. I don't have a design now, ma'am. In the back. I, my question is: I understand that uh, most of it's private development, and you had mentioned at the beginning of the, this meeting that somebody suggested having a hotel. I have a concern. And I can understand why the hotel is there to bring people in. But with a hotel in the middle, near Old Town, when down the gold line there's what, four or five hotels down there that are kind of interesting, why would, any, why would we want to have a hotel in Old Town or Valley? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I can answer that because I'm the one that, um, that well, the city and Aurora. So we are a city of 110,000 people. And we want to be a, a full city, a full service city, and, and, have, and have services for, for everything. Right now, we have one hotel in the entire city. Uh, and we got that one a few years ago. It's a, um, I think it's called Savannah Suites. It's on um, Sheridan. Well, if you um, are working with all of our businesses, uh, we, they want a hotel to put their businesses. People who are in Arvada are very proud of Arvada. They are proud to have their homes here, their businesses here, and if they have guests here, or if they have um, business people come in, they want their guests and their family and their businesses to stay in Arvada. Family weddings. Right, if they're, if they're coming and they're gonna go and do something at the apex, or they're gonna um, do whatever, they, they have to leave Arvada to stay somewhere. We want them to have a place to stay here. And what is so beautiful about Old Town is you can have a hotel, and we're not looking at a, at a uh, we're not advocating uh, for a low-end hotel. We would like something nicer if we can get a Marriott, you know, dream big, let's get something nice. Um, what would be great is that these people then, they stay there, they, they have all of Old Town to go to. They say, well, where do I want to eat tonight? Where do I want to shop? You know, they would come out and they would they would populate the streets. So that's why, you know, we could go ahead and not have it affiliated to Old Town and make it more suburban, but it's the connection, it's the place. And also, um, you know, instead of having everybody go downtown, you know, why don't we get a hotel here? And if they have business, they could ride the train. 
downtown. They could take the train from the airport to Old Town, and if they had business downtown, they could go downtown. Where do you so stand on developing crazy. that area east of Wadsworth Bypass, uh, south of Grandview, that vacant, uh, abandoned areas with just a couple of houses on it? An industrial area. Why couldn't we develop that area instead of putting it closer to Old Town? Because we want the people to to shop, to go to the bakery. We want them to go eat at the bakery. We want them to go eat at Udi's. We want them to go have coffee. We want them to help make Old Town vibrant and good. Yeah. So, so is it the people that live there? That are the stores and spending buildings. Interesting concept. Yeah. Yeah. Socialism yeah. gone wrong. That's wrong. Okay. Yes. Now, the second thing that, is, that I wanted to ask is, we were talking about the, the parking garage, which is, um, and it's 600 spaces. I'm required that you hand it out tonight. 400 it's to 600. 400 and a 300. And I, I well, don't the, understand that. The most, the most that we can do in this configuration is probably in the 690 area, but we haven't designed it. It will be, we have to provide 400. Uh, we've been asked by multiple sectors to see if there is a way that more public parking could be provided to support Old Town and to support the area, so we're looking at it. Uh, we, don't, we don't have a design, so we don't have an actual count. I would say it's going to be somewhere between can we get an additional 200 to 300 spaces on top of the 400, and it will be somewhere in that 600 to 700 range. It all depends on how it fits into this hillside and how the design is and, and a variety of other things. Where the bus station is, how the bus station fits in. So we'll be, we'll be developing that concept. And they're doing that based on city council's recommendation because we've heard from all the people who go to Old Town. You know, Old Town is getting really successful. You know, it used to be, and I think this is what um, uh, the Marlows were, were referencing, you know, a few, you know, 20 years ago, you could park anywhere you wanted because, you know, really nobody came to Old Town. Well, now Old Town is on the map. You know, it is a place to come. And so now parking has, has become a little more challenging, and we want it to remain you know, this new vibrant place where people say, you know, let's go to Old Town for dinner. And they don't say where they're going to go to Old Town. They just say, let's meet and we'll figure out what restaurant we're going to go to because we have so many restaurants to choose from. So we, we want more parking for Old Town. So we have said to Bill, you know, what can we build in that area more parking? And the, I, the, the thing that's so perfect about this is it doesn't rise above the grade. So when you're standing there in this beautiful plaza, so when you come down the, um, the train and you get off in Old Town, you're going to get off and you're going to see all of those beautiful buildings right there on Grandview. And then you can turn around and you see the mountains and you see the water tower because that parking structure is built down the hill. So we can hide almost 700 cars down the hill. It's between the movie theater and, um, and the, the, train. Train. Yeah. the train in there. And so you, know, you don't even know what's there. You know, so that's like the ideal thing. Now the, the hard part about this whole thing is how do we afford it? So all this is on the backs of the city of Arvada because what happened with RTD is, remember I said in the beginning that they had to build those 400 surface parking spaces. That is what we as voters, when we approve this, we approve surface parking in the bigger scheme of things. Um, they don't have in their budget the money to build a parking structure. So if we as a community say that nine acre site is, is a better site than, than surface parking, then we, the city, have to pay for a parking structure. So we're going to pay for a parking structure because we think this area is too valuable. There's more uses that can happen. And now we're also digging a little deeper to say, what can we do to help Old Town, to help these businesses, the restaurants, everybody? Let's try and see if we can find some more money to be able to build excess parking to help Old Town. So, you know, I think that, you know, that, that, that Trammell Crow really <coughs> thought out of the box because every development that we came, remember I said we had 10 uh, RFPs? They all just put a regular parking structure on that nine acres. And these guys came up with, you know, we have a, a way to hide all that that won't impact the views. So hats off to them. Yes. Okay, so we've got. Oh, six, six story buildings that you're talking about. 
talking about? Is that, is that the apartments? Is that the parking structure? I mean, what exactly in the pamphlet that brought us here? It's an up to six story building. <coughs> well, for, I doubt it's going to be that tall because you can't build that tall and certain kinds of construction. So what we want to Oh, I don't, I don't know about three that. Stories yeah. Yeah, three stories, I mean, generally three, four stories is the most you can build. It may, I didn't. But we can't get waiver, you can't get waivers on height. You're talking about a hundred hotel, right when you come into Old Town, Nevada, right there on the corner. And how are you going to go a hundred feet to get in the building? Right there. So you're saying, oh, you have this beautiful view. No, you don't. You have coming right on Grand View and Wadsworth, you're going to put a hotel right there. There's no view. No, it's down below. It's down below, but that's that's fine. I understand your point. I, this lady, the, the hotel is, even if it's at the Grand View intersection, it drops 30 feet. So we have to figure out how, first of all, let me be very clear. A hotel is a real stretch at this location. It is hard to figure out how to finance a hotel in this location. We're committed to see if we can make the hotel work. Because I think a hotel supports Old Town, supports the neighborhood residents. Most of the hotels really support the people who live in the area, who have friends and other kinds of visitors. The hotel, I guarantee you, is going to want to be at the corner of 56th and Wadsworth. Our proposal tries to push it up to the Vance Grandview corner which is not really the corner because the tracks are there and then the hill is there. And we have to figure out how to deal with this grade because the grade is like this. So we have to figure out whether a hotel really works there. But our idea was to bring people to the corner of Vance and Grandview to create some activity <laughs> and to create a marketplace that supports Old Town. Whether the hotel happens, whether it happens at this corner, is what we're going to explore. But now, and I, because I, I was trying to get this picture in my mind. So you got 30 feet of the hill. Right. So. If the hotel is six stories. The hotel will not be six stories. Okay. We can't afford a six story hotel. So we'll, 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 just have to I, we'll have to, two or three, four, probably three max, four. yeah. I mean, you can't, there's a certain height when you go that you get into fire codes that will make the building too expensive, in my view. So a hotel at that level is not gonna be, even if it's a four story hotel, it's not gonna be four stories from Grandview. It'll probably be no more than one or two stories from Grandview. Because you gotta build it down on the ground to come up. So that's the challenge that we've got. I am, I'll stand here before you today, I have no real clue how we're gonna deal with this grade change on Vance. Our challenge is to figure out how to take this hillside and either develop a project that is down on the 56th elevation, down away from, to, from Old Town, and doesn't relate to Old Town, and let people climb the hill. What we're, what we're trying to figure out is, that the, is there a way that this development from 56th coming up to Grandview can somehow transition that height in a way that people will walk it and people will go to the station. I want people who live on the east side of Wattsworth to cross at a light on 56th, walk up 56th, walk to a plaza and be able to get to the train station so they'll use the train station. That's the point of what we're trying to do here. So if we can get a hotel to help us make that transition, we'll do it. If the hotel wants to be at the corner of 56th and Wadsworth, we'll look at it, but we have to figure out if that's the right place for it overall. And I guarantee you that if we put it at the corner of 56th and Wadsworth, they're gonna want a bunch of parking and we're gonna end up with the whole parking issue. If we can put it over in next to the train station, Maybe somebody will take the train from the airport or whatever and get there and, or park in the, in the public parking garage and we don't have to build that. So those are some of the issues we're trying to address. Yes, ma'am. I've got two questions and they both yeah. have to do with kind of community involvement in the process. The first one um, is basically in the, in the development that's going on right now in Old Town, um, by the time the community was involved at all in the process, the design was done. Um, and it's a very contemporary design that many of us don't like. So at what point will we actually be invited in as a community into getting input around the design process? I really hope it will be much earlier than it was with PPOC. Okay, let me, um, and I understand that issue, and, and let me say that I view this in three phases. The first phase is the phase we're in, which is talking about the concept. What are we going to we got to tackle this in a, in a fairly broad way. That's what we're doing now. The next phase will be 
how is this property going to be zoned? Zoning does not deal with design. Zoning deals with is this housing, is this retail, is it six stories, is it two stories, how's the parking deal? So we'll deal with the zoning. Then we'll start talking about individual design for individual projects and that, that obviously are going to have to fit into the zoning. Um, my commitment is that we will work with the community every step of the way through that process. It's our project, it's our nine acres that we're going to buy from these folks, and we have to take it through that kind of a process, and I'm committed to doing that. I wouldn't be here, I had no reason to show up tonight in the overall scheme of things. There's no city ordinance that says I got to be here tonight or have a hearing tonight or do this tonight. We're doing this because Thanksgiving and Christmas are coming up, so I knew we had to do it now, and we're committed to having another community meeting in January, which is when we'll be kicking off the zoning process, and I will be, we will be back to talk to you about the other pieces of it. Thank you. I'm really glad to hear that because it yes. seems like in the project that I'm contracting is with all three things we're done all at once. And well, and I, yeah, and I, and I don't, you know, I don't know about that, and but, and I'm committed to what but what our process is. Right. And I, 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 got, I understand that. So, yeah. So you know, so thank yeah. you for taking that. I have worked in historic traffic generating areas, residential neighborhoods. I, I, I understand the angst, and I understand the. Um, concern and I appreciate it. I mean, just the fact that this many people showed up to come to a meeting tonight on this issue shows that people care about how this place develops. As I said at the beginning, I'm not going to make everybody happy, um, but we're going to do our best to try and do a development that, that is economically feasible, that makes the community proud, and that serves the investment that RTD and, and the city of Arvada are making. And we respect that process. Trevor Crow's been around for a long time. I've seen him. I've lived here all my life. Right. Have you guys already purchased the property? No. Or that's still in the We don't, we have not purchased it. We don't have even have an agreement yet to purchase it because we don't have zoning, we don't have. Let me make one other quick comment, not a negative or a positive. We are not Trammell Pro Residential. You will hear about Trammell Pro Residential. It's not our company, it's not affiliated with us. We're not part of them, they're not part of us. They are an apartment developer. We are not Trammell Pro Residential. I'm not saying that as a good or a bad. I just want the facts out that that's the case. So if you see, Travel Pro Residential Projects, those are not ours. So, just so you're just what Travel Pro? We're a Travel Pro company. Right. And our residential will be developed under the name of High Street Residential. That's how we'll do that. And uh, the names that you'll see for us developing the housing will probably be in the name of High Street. High, High Street Residential, H-I-G-H. -H. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, so I, you did sort of, so I know you're not the design phase at this point. Earlier though, you did mention that um, the idea of doing like old timey brick type of construction is probably out. I, I thought I caught, I thought I heard you say something along those lines. And so my question was, I mean, we moved here two years ago. It looked like it was an up and coming place. It had really fun, tricky old buildings. You know, everything being converted into breweries and fry shops and all kinds of fun stuff. And I absolutely love the direction that you guys are going with all the buildings you're bringing in and the transit. And I think it's very exciting. I think that values follow that as far as like properties are concerned. And I mean, in every possible way, I, I see it being something positive. Um, however, I also like really want it to be of the same vibe. And I think a, lot, a couple right. of have touched on that, but like there's there's an aesthetic appeal to the old town feel that has to do with the brick and the older style of building. And I know that buildings can be built to look retro, and so I'm wondering, as far as, because you mentioned budget and things like that, as far as like, you know, height of those kind of things. So my question is, as far as like budgets and things that are concerned, are you guys even considering doing something with sort of a retro feel to it, where it fits in aesthetically in that way. Yeah, that, those are really, really good comments. And let me, let me explain what I mean by that. We have, we've done historic preservation projects, both uh, here and then I've done them in Arizona. What we don't want to do is try and build something new that looks like it's old. I mean, we don't, we don't want to say, let's try and build a building so it looks like Old Town Arvada and you know, the people will be fooled. If you, 
if you do an historic preservation project in most communities, you have to differentiate yourself in some way that somebody looks at a building and says, that's an old building, that's a new building, that new building fits in with the old building, and there's a relationship between them. That's what we want to accomplish. I don't think we're going to be overly contemporary and like we came in from South Beach uh, in Miami. But I also am saying that I, because I think this is important from an historic preservation standpoint. If I was an historic preservationist from the Historical Society or whatever, and I came in and said I was going to build housing to, do, to mimic Old Town, I'd say, I don't want that. You don't, you don't want that. That doesn't mean that it can't have brick. That doesn't mean that you can't pull out elements. I was involved in the design and development of Coors Field. We went through old uh, Lodo and we measured all the windows in Lodo and on the streets and we went back to the Coors Field designers and we said we want the openings at Coors Field to mimic these window sizes, but they're not going to be glass, they're just going to be framed. We, we took some memory, if you will, from those buildings but we didn't try to duplicate it. And so that's all I want clear, is that we're not gonna try and make this thing look like Old Town. In fact, you know, my challenge as a developer is, we're 30 feet below Old Town and a block south of Old Town. How do I, I don't love Old Town. I think we're selling Old Town. But when somebody comes, they're gonna say, this isn't Old Town. Well, no, it's not Old Town. You gotta go up a hill, you're separated, it's, you know, there's two railroad tracks. We're 50 feet away from the railroad tracks before we can even develop a, a building. So we want it to be, I, I would want to say we want, uh, we want it to be uh, Arvada, train, farming, history of Arvada, some, something rooted that has quality materials and that has earth-oriented materials and colors probably. I'm just talking off the top of my head. And not something that doesn't look like it belongs in Arvada. But I'm not here to try and duplicate or extend Old Town Arvada another block. I, I can't do that and I shouldn't do that. So that's enough. That's good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. What is the schedule for determining uh, the number of space the number of spaces in the garage? Oh boy. Uh, number of spaces in the garage. Um, I think that we hopefully can reach some understanding with the city and the design uh, on the garage possibilities in the, by the end of the year so that in January we can really kind of figure out are we going with the big one or are we going with the small one. And right now we're working with our designers to look at what does the 400 one look like, what does the 600 plus one look like, let's take those to the city show those and then, you know, um, I can come and show those in January. Can I read my Yes. <laughs> For people wondering, I'm not part of the city, I'm just photographing this, this put on our own website at uh, rollsecondivity.org. But I, one of the things I didn't like about the proposal for the parking garage was the fact that it has an optional pedestrian route. I really like that. I mean, when I look at the numbers, we got a train coming, Seven and a half minutes to that station. I don't know. RTD can't tell me whether Dad Street and Old Mom are going to be closed during that time, or people are going to try to be crossing that street, uh, uh, crossing the tracks to get to the station because it's all on the other side. If we put that in there, I'm going to feel a lot better. The original proposal before the uh, director of the city, we were going to have a train every three minutes and 15 seconds coming to Gold Town. Mm. And maybe they'll come back again, but right now that schedule is cut in half. But I'm still really worried about people trying to cross the tracks when everything's closed and you can just jump over there. You've got two trains coming at the same time sometimes because of the, uh, the heavy rail and uh, the commuter rail at the same time. But uh, the and Northern run as well. So if you can keep that option in there, I really would like to see that. Well, a, a few things about the bridge. Um, we have no money for the bridge right now. <laughs> Wait, let me check. So, <laughs> So we're trying to fit that into the budget. Uh, secondly, I think the bridge is a good idea for the commuters to get over the, and to not be trying to cross the street with the trains from a safety standpoint and from a convenience standpoint. Thirdly, if possible, I would like to see the elevator, and this is something that we're, we're working on and committed to, is have the elevator serve the pedestrians beyond the parking garage so that residents who live south of this area can get to the garage I mean, can get to the elevator to get to the parking spot. To get to the elevator, to get to the train station, 
without having to climb the hill and go over the tracks. I like that. And so that's another aspect of it. Uh, and then uh, fourthly, uh, obviously we want to make sure that the, all the view issues, we get grand view, grand view. Um, so we understand that. So one of the initial ideas we had was we should have a, a, a bridge and we put it right in the middle of the, the garage. The natural place for the bridge is to be in the middle of the garage. So it's equidistant from the ends so that people can get there, but it plopped it down kind of in the middle of that site. So we moved it up towards Vance to kind of get it out of the view plane, move it back from Grand View, and so we, we're trying to design that in a view plane sense. The other thing that we're interest, I'm interested in with the elevator is if we can separate it so it's part of the garage but also serves the general public crossing at 56, can that elevator be kind of an iconic design and a, and a, a symbol of this new development in this new area so it becomes you know, something that's, that's got some identity to it, that brings some identity to our and to the project and to the, to the, to the uh, overall station and parking facility. So those are five aspects of the, of the bridge that we're dealing with. Um, and we'll see, whether, we'll see whether we can pull it off. We're, we're gonna submit for a grant and we're gonna look at it within the original budget. We're going to hopefully provide for it, even if it can't be done initially, it could be done later maybe without tearing up anything. So those are the things we're evaluating on the bridge. Yes, sir. You know, uh, one, me for one, I'm very happy to see that they're bringing money and restoration into the area. Um, you know, you take marketing and demographics and you draw a circle around, I would like to keep that money here in Old Town Um You keep in mind that where the Old West Benson Mall was is a very large site and no one's talking about doing anything and you only have so much time to, to lock in your demographics and your people that are going to shop and utilize and spend money in our area, in our town, in our tax district, before they go build something big over there. And you just have that much time to make an impression. And what business owners, I'm sure, are very looking for is 200 extra cars a day would be amazing for any business. And that only takes 30 seconds on a for 200 cars to pass. So we're not talking about congesting the heck out of something. We're talking about sustaining good business here before that business goes to another city. I think a study was once done where I was told that every parking slot that you have on the street is worth about $65,000 a year to that business community. So if we have 300 additional parking slots, currently if you try to find parking that's more than two hours in Old Town, on any day in the middle of the day, you really have to drive a little bit, and that may be part of the congestion. But at $65,000, just look at the sales tax that generates for each lot, and you can start to see that it could be an ROI on that. Well, hopefully there'll be an ROI to the city coffers for sure. Right. Yeah, <laughs> or else we shouldn't be and, doing what we're doing. And at least you're putting money in the area, because, I mean, you look around our area, and if you don't start putting money down in there, you just have more people putting tubs in their front lawns, and bottles hanging off the trees, and doing all other kind of crazy things that no one's complaining about for some reason, why there's toilet bowls in the front lawn, <laughs> people living in RVs in their driveway. Okay. I mean, it's ridiculous. They get away with that, but then people have such a hard time about actually doing something good for the community. Well, my view is if we can pull in some public parking spaces here that's kind of off the grid, not part of Old Town, uh, it beats putting a 200 car parking garage in the middle of Old Town that gets demanded someday in the future, which it will. And so this is a place that's kind of on the fringe that doesn't disappear necessarily, but it, you know, it's, it's in the hillside. And I think it, it won't block views, which will be good. Any, any, any other comments, questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I've heard that. <laughs> she wants to know if there could be a grocery store. Yes. So. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So my second question was um, back in the spring, our vast participation. Yes. 
you know about that Absolutely. study, has had many recommendations related to pedestrian orientation, right. etc. So I just wanted to make sure you were aware yeah. of that. We've, that was being we've met with, I, I can't find that study in place. We met so with the foundation, the and um, uh, I knew the consultant talked to him about their stuff, and I think a lot of what we're talking about is, is recommended by them and supported, and um, so we're, we're aligned with that from our site standpoint. Yes, sir. I a comment that I usually address how many different entities are involved in this little nine acre plot. Now that makes <laughs> things easy, doesn't it? <laughs> it's so incredibly complicated and, and so many different people's money's on the line. And that you guys care about the people in the area's lives and, and as it relates to the whole thing, it's just incredible. It's very huge and it's, uh, it's appreciated. Appreciate. Oh, that's good. I, I really commend Arvada for uh, the, and I've said this publicly in, in a couple of presentations I've given, um, we've got lots of issues in the way communities deal with these things. There's no question, and people make decisions that other people aren't happy about. But overall, with this project, the process that's gone along, it's actually been helpful to us because they brought everybody together. We knew most everybody's issues before we even presented. We knew a lot of the, you know, the flour mill, the views, Old Town, um, you know, Pedestrian, we got it early on because that was communicated to us, and so um, I think it is it, overall, as it relates to this site, it's been a good process. Yes, sir. Yes, I had a couple of questions. Uh, is there going to be an above grade structure at the, the train station itself on what would be the top of the parking structure? No, the 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 bus facility will be at grade where the teller lot is, south of the train tracks, and there will be some canopies for waiting if the bus station is on top of the facility. We're also looking at turning it upside down and putting the buses at the bottom of the facility, uh, which has some advantages overall. And, and then it would be, the deck would be below. Uh, How are people going to disembark from the train? So then the train, the, the commuter track, is on the north side of the two tracks, on the north side of the freight line. So when the people get off of the commuter line, they're actually going to be getting off facing Grandview, OK? And the, the freight train will be behind them and the bus station will be behind them. So they're either going to have to go to Vance or they're going to have to go to Old Wadsworth to get to the bus facility and the parking and walk all the way around unless we put this bridge in with some stairs and elevators so that people can just go right up and over. So there'll be no structures at, at the grade, only structure on Grandview, on Grandview when, when, to disembark the train? Set back from Grandview at a little bit lower grade than Grandview is today, I believe that's right. Uh, there, the train station will have a platform and it will have a canopy. I think those canopies are about eight feet tall or so. Um, you know, just for rain and snow, just so people can get under. And uh, uh, we need to see those designs from RTD and the, uh, the Denver Transit Partners people that are building that to understand where those go and how those look. So no so enclosed heated building. There's no enclosed heated building for the train facility. Uh, to me, it seems like the challenge of this project is the connectivity between the, the parcel north of 56 and the train and the tracks. Right. Um, is there going to be a, a connection? Can there be a connection, a pedestrian connection, outside of a vehicular connection across the tracks anywhere in this section? Of the a pedestrian connection outside of the tracks. In other words, is there a place mid block where people can actually walk across the tracks no. when it's no. free, or is it going to be? It can only be done. Secure? It can only the, because of the freight train. There will be there's a fence, so we have to either build a bridge or we have to take people to the intersection. And that's why I'm pretty keen on having a bridge if we can work it out for the bus for the bus facility and the parking facility. Move it towards Vance so it serves the purpose of serving people off of 56 as well as the station, and that's, I mean, that's a potential play. You know right now how you can walk back and forth um, from, from the south side of the tracks to the north side of the tracks, and you just step over them. You won't be able right. to do that. They're going to have a fence there once it's built. Okay. Uh, Bill, I have another question for you. Yes. So as I see it, the, 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 the challenge in this project is how do you connect that, that large block of, of buildings that you're going to be putting in there and there's multi-uses to the, the grand view level. Right. Okay? You've got 30, 20, or 30 feet of grade change. Um, to me, that, that means that you, you may look at, at Vance Street being some sort of a promenade. I mean, I, I think that there needs to be a real, real you know, special you know, care taken 
from the pedestrian you know, experience from down 56 up that hill. It's, it's going to be a difficult, difficult Are you an architect? People don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you? Yeah, yeah you're talking. Right. Okay. You're right. You're right. People That's don't exactly. want. People don't want. Are going to be wanting to go walk up there. So what I see is if right. you don't make that Van Street connectivity very pedestrian, very, very appealing, then you really don't have any connectivity. You're going to have a block of development east of Vance that's basically going to be an island. I don't care if there's a hotel there or if there's a if there's a parking garage or on the east or west side. You've got a block right. that really is disconnected. So I think that we have to to look at this as as a as a planning uh, study. We're really separate. I think you can't you can't try right. to, to no, sell the fact that you're gonna you're gonna really have this connectivity. You're really creating a development with hundreds of thousands of square feet below grade at Grandview to the east of Vance, and you're gonna and you have a parking garage. So. There's a lot of things that I think need to come into play here. And without the, the community really seeing how those might be masked out, right. how, the, how the, the, the roads might work, how the, the, um, the traffic signals might work, then I think we're all still kind of wondering what's going on. Right. Because you can do anything down there. You can promise a lot of great things. But if you don't get people to actually want to go up that hill, then you've lost right. the whole concept. Couldn't agree. Thank you. You stated it better than I did. I said at the very beginning, we can either do this as a separate facility down the hill, separate from Old Town, or we figure out how to make that connection occur. It's a real challenge. And, and our original thoughts were maybe there's some mid-block between Vance and Wadsworth pedestrian connections going up. We're gonna, we might use the trolley plaza for it or the trolley land for that, for instance, to do that because we can't walk across the freight line. So you got to get people from that point back to Vance somehow. You can't get them to Wadsworth because Wadsworth by then is 50 feet below you. So Vance is the key. All of the analysis we're looking at for the parking and for our design along Vance is how do you create that promenade? We've actually got uh, some, some drawings that we've sort of sketched out that says why can't we create these series of steps and plazas up the path going to Vance? Um, can the hotel... I don't know about an escalator. You see, that was my question. Maybe you could do like the Spanish chefs on this project sure. or something. But and we're, I mean, if you don't do that, then it's just going to be, uh, you know. My designers were talking to me about that today. They said, what about these? And, and the other idea was, is there a way that you tie this in for people who are handicapped or older or don't want to walk up the damn thing, darn thing, to, <laughs> to get to this plaza and take this elevator up and over the bridge? So don't make... So now we're looking at can we turn the elevator outboard and not have it be internal to the, to the parking facility and have it be external to serve parking and pedestrians so that you get to a point in a plaza and you say, do I take the elevator or do I go up these grand stairs and it has settings? Maybe there's little performance areas along there. I mean, how much width do we have? Can we do it on both sides of the street? You've hit the nail on the head. Can we make a successful development on 56th? We can do it. I can, we can do a development at 56 that is its own little pod. What we're committed to is trying to figure out how we make this development on 56 not part of Old Town. We're never going to be part of Old Town because we're going to be down the hill. But how do we make it so that I'm not even I'm not looking at just our residents. I'm looking at the other side of Wattsworth, for instance, or the people in the water tower coming across and maybe using this to get up to, up, up to Grand. Well, I think so the, the mid, you're, mid you're right on what our challenge is and what we're committed yeah. to doing. The mid-block connection, I think, is important. The buildings, if, if you have that idea in your head, you didn't show it on your drawings. Because when you showed the three phases as you infill, right. there's, no, there's no space for that. And if you're going to yeah, design well, it, you're going to yeah. think about 100 feet right away, right up maybe mid-block <coughs> that does this sort of pedestrian connection. Well, I don't think don't. we actually have drawings that had a pedestrian stair. It's not 100 feet because that it doesn't need to be that wide, but it needs to be 20 or 30 feet wide that went up the middle. Well, with landscape, and we have something yeah. very pleasant. Right, but we don't want 100 feet is broader than a city street. We don't need that. So, but you're, all the things you've talked about, we're committed to figuring out. And it's not an easy solution overall. Yes, ma'am. And if you don't have that in place, then it's an easy place to access. They're going to park in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Right. That are adjacent to Old Town. Right. That's going to be used. Yeah. Right. And that's why this parking facility being where it is could be really helpful. Do you think people will go upstairs? Well, they'll, they'll use, the people who are parked in the parking garage will use the elevator. Because I don't think they'll. Reason, there's a reason to go out of the hill. People will go out the hill. Uh, have we been in Park City, Utah, where people mm -hmm. like go out the hill all the time? Yeah. Constantly, right. it's one of the most successful retail yeah. If we light it, it's pleasant, it's wider than a sidewalk, there's activity there, grand views the end. You can do retail on right. the side of vans and bring people out Yeah, I'm not, not sure how much retail we can get on that. That thing's pretty <laughs> steep, but but anyway, all of the things that you all are talking about is what we but need to figure out. Buildings on Park City, especially as you get towards the upper end, where the slope starts to build up dramatically, where they do have, like, what you're saying, maybe a four-story hotel, but if that's a four-story retail, you have part of the retail on level one running into the hill, it ends, then all at once you end up one step up and it goes a little further. Yeah. At that point, people can kind of meander slowly across. Yeah, I think there's I think there's a variety of design ways to figure it out. Right, but a lot of towns have done it before us. Because right, it's just, right. it makes it more interesting. There's nothing yeah. interesting about walking up with 30 foot. Right, right now walking up vans is not a not a way to spend your time. <laughs> and I walk in. Yeah. Yeah. But other than some kids that use it to, you know, hang out to smoke or something, right. it's not used that often. Right. Even though it's really pretty. I mean, it's got nice flowers in the summer and well landscape. Well, if we're successful, this will be a place that people will know what it does. They'll want to park there to go to Old Town. They'll say, let's go to the garage. It's easy. We can go up the hill. We can go up the elevator. We can do, get there a variety of ways. And that's what we want to have happen. Any, anybody that hasn't been called on yet that hasn't gotten their two cents in here? What's that? Thank you. All right. Anything else? Just, just a quick reminder. Sorry. Yes. No, just a quick reminder. Uh -huh. uh, Old Town, uh, uh, the website, Old Town, uh, TOD.org uh, for information and, and uh, alerts and all those kinds of things. If you can, if you can go onto that website and, and uh, uh, check it, and also sign up for the notify me alerts. And if you have any questions, uh, you can call you know our office, and we can uh, we can help you to, to uh, you know get on that uh, get on that website and the notify me alerts so we can keep everyone informed. The most important question I think we all forgot to ask: Is this going to affect our property tax? <laughs> we're not. We're not charging you. Yeah. I don't. You know. If the values go up and the property tax, I'm happy. Okay. Well, hopefully it'll increase values. How about that? <laughs> we're not going to be. We're not going to be collecting money from your property increased property tax. How about that? Um, so I think the next. Uh, what I'm thinking, we're we're going to go through and there's a process to initiate a rezoning, and we have to initiate a rezoning on this project. So we will be starting that process, which is a, just getting the paperwork and starting to fill that out. We will be back, I will be back in January uh, to talk to you about where we're at, both with the garage. It, it could be sooner, I just, doing stuff between Thanksgiving and Christmas for people is a hassle. Um, so I, I don't think we're gonna get so far ahead of ourselves that January date doesn't work and we will come back and talk about the parking and our rezoning process. Uh, is that fair? Yeah. For everybody? Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it.